All right, Brent Porcia, topvelocity.net, doing a pitch analysis here for Lewis. Going to pair him up with my Japanese favorite, a, a sow. Let's uh, take Lewis into his leg lift. Take a sow into his leg lift. Okay, you notice when the, when the sow's coming up into his lift, we can see he's lifting and a little rotation, but also he's moving forward. He's got that linear move going. So um, that rotation is also a product or result of the movement sh shifting early into his leg lift, which is very common in high velocity pitchers. It's why, um, you know, a lot of new, uh, the, uh, the new approaches, they talk about this leading with the hip or pushing the hips out there. It's really more of a momentum shift forward. As you can see here, it's not so much he's pushing the hip out. You don't see him really trying to push the hip out. You just see as he's coming up, he's moving forward, and the lift leg is pulling away, which it pushes the hip or exposes the hip forward like that. We can see you coming into your leg lift. You're going straight up, and you're kind of doing that little push the hip out. That's fine if you're moving. If you're not moving, then that hip pushing, that thrusting the hip out is really going to have little effect. It really needs to be the result of your pretty much everything from your hips up shifting forward into your leg lift. So best way to determine that is we'll draw a, dry, uh, a line off your drive leg and we can see that you do have your weight inside because you're, you're pushing your hip out, but look at your head. Your head's touching the line and your drive leg knees touching the line. That's important to notice because if we go to Sal here, we put him in the same position. You draw that line off his drive leg, if I can get it straight. We can see his head is a good distance from that line. So is his hips. And then you can see his drive leg knee as well. We'll go back and draw that line for you so you can see. Sorry, it's going to come off right here. So it's a little better for you. The only thing is, is look, this is a perfect side view. Yours is kind of turned. So we, we really have to get a little bit snugger to show the proportions are right. So you can see your head's closer, your hips are closer, and your drive leg knee is right on there in that vertical position. Okay, so it's not, this is not so important up front. It's just, it's important to understand that high velocity pitchers shift earlier into their leg lifts in that linear direction. Um, and and that shift is, is a momentum shift and not just pushing the hips out. We don't really want to address this issue or this component until after we've mastered everything at front foot strike. When our front foot lands, um, there's a lot of complexity there. There's a lot of things that must have occurred for you to be able to put yourself in a high velocity category. So that's a, a ton more important than this position here. This position here assists and supports it, but it's most important that we know what we have to do down the hill into front foot. These are kind of peripheral things we can fix later on that will just enhance what we have front foot. But if we work on this now and we don't know what to do at front foot, then it can really just mess things up. So understand that front foot strike is, is critical. And that's where we focus or we spend most of our time with the 3X Pitching Velocity Program. We, we focus all of our time on getting better at all the important factors of front foot strike because that's where high velocity pitchers are made um, well that's where basically we can see um, what's going to happen uh, to the velocity of the ball at that point if you've done it everything right or if you haven't okay so let's take you to that position so as your lift leg descends you can see a little bit momentum shift but you're still kind of just floating and balancing over that drive leg. So now you're starting to get out. I really look for the force vector knee, the, the knee in the in the drive leg. The force vector is 
the angle of your ankle to knee. Wherever that is pointing is your angle of force because that's the only thing on the ground. And we build ground reaction forces as athletes, specifically as pitchers. So because we're also linear athletes and not vertical athletes, we have to get the force vector in a linear position if we're going to build or we'll be able to convert that force into our performance. So as we're moving to the load, I'm looking for that drive leg knee. Is it coming down into position? And you can see it's starting here. It's continuing to move. And also I want to see with the point where you hit peak flexion and your linear. So peak flexion is when that you come down from that drive leg knee into a flex position. So you, you hit it here. So you can see you peaked your flexion here. The problem with that is you're not linear. So now you're going to have to hold that position as you get linear. And what tends to happen is we tend to move out of flexion. Or, and it, it also doesn't ultimately use the stretch shortening cycle as effectively because what the stretch shortening cycle is is a muscle will fire more explosively if it's there's an eccentric movement before the concentric movement so if that thigh muscle is stretched um, before it's it's fired which will support um, which will support triple extension okay so you can see you hit that peak flexion here and you're still not linear. Let's take a salad, see what he does. So notice as his lift leg comes down, he extends it to kind of hold it back. Um, you do a decent job of holding it back because we know once the lift leg gets out, then everything starts to end. The drive leg knee starts to rotate down. We start to put down on the front leg and we really can't build power at that point. So we hold the lift leg back so we can prevent opening up early and losing power. But you notice how a sow's moving forward and down at the same rate. That's key to getting to this position, which is right here. That's key getting to that load position, what we call the load position, um, effectively. Meaning you have hit the eccentric movement in the quad, ready to fire into a concentric movement, and you're linear. So, High velocity pitchers do this really well. They'll say this is where his hips were when he went into his leg lift, and this is where his hips are now. He went forward and down at the same rate. So if we play that back, you can really see it as you watch it. So there it is. Look at this, forward and down at the same rate. It's a perfect movement down that line. Now if we watch you, here's your hip position. Now let's see when you stop moving down. So right there, right here is where you stop moving down so here is your hip position here's your hip position here you went forward down the same rate but the problem is your your vertical here so now you gotta go out so this is where your hip position is gonna finally get so you went down and out you didn't move like these high velocity pitchers do forward and down at the same rate which gives them peak flexion and a linear force vector so we you we have to like I said you have to drift out to get linear and you can see when you get into that similar position another problem occurred you lost flexion because if we go down and then out we tend to lose flexion as we get linear so what happens is you get into the same linear position that a sow is in, but you have an extended leg and he has a flexed leg. Now the reason that's important is because the next component is the power component and that component is called triple extension. It's when we extend the ankle, knee, and the hip flexor. And how can we have extension or go into extension if when we're in a linear position when we already have extension, it's not going to happen. So you're not going to have as much power as a sow is going to have. Now here I'll show you what triple extension is. But I want to compliment compliment you here. You you stayed closed really well on your lift leg, your glove side. You look very identical to him. You're just not loaded well on your drive leg. So this is what happens if you are loaded well. You'll then move as you open the front side. 
you'll move into triple extension as you can see as he's opening the front foot the knees going down but at the same time he's powering through and the reason we have to have a very explosive drive leg power movement is because high velocity pitchers they rotate their hips earlier and faster at front foot strike so if we are going to rotate our hips to front foot strike meaning when they land as you can see here Sal's hips are already rotating as he goes into front foot strike and as you see as he lands the hips are completely open you are not going to get this back hip to push around before the front foot lands if you don't drive and extend it so that a triple extension is not only building linear power but if you were following it with the opening of the front foot it's driving the hips around before the front foot lands so then when the front foot lands you have that perfect triple extension hip front foot strike stables front leg and the hips are completely open let's see what Lewis can do so you can see the next frame really because your extension occurred let's see right here so as you started moving extension you had to keep moving it down which is a loss of power you opened your front side and then you land with your foot still in the dirt or still in, in the hole so look at the difference here this is a sow at front foot strike this is you at front foot strike what's what's the main difference the main difference is and the critical difference is you had less power we can see it here he's about a foot off the rubber his hips are completely open your hips are completely closed so this back hip is being pulled back not being driven forward like a sow here and that's so critical that's really what separates you from a high velocity pitcher we you look very similar here but the key component is the fact that the hips are open. We know this is what high velocity pitchers do because we can see it when we watch them in slow motion. And all the studies have shown that high velocity pitchers at front foot strike, hips open, low velocity pitchers, hips closed. High velocity pitchers at front foot strike, hip to shoulder optimal hip to shoulder separation, meaning while the hips are open, but the shoulders are still closed. We can see in this, and it also says low velocity pitcher, front foot strike, hips closed, shoulders closed. But when those hips finally come around, which we'll wait for your hips to come around, which this line shows us when they finally came around. So right here, we low velocity pitchers at that point have very poor hip shoulder separation. In the case of you, have already thrown the ball. So look, this is when a sow's hips came around. Here's his line. If it was there, here's your line he hasn't thrown the ball yet you have now what that does is and the reason it's so critical in the, the NPA in 2005 2006 their velocity study proved that 80 percent of a pitcher's potential pitching velocity comes from his ability to separate his hips from shoulders at front foot strike so hip to shoulder separation is roughly 80 percent of your pitching velocity so you can see if you're not using it if you're not creating it then you are not tapping into the majority of your pitching velocity potential. And that's what we do with the 3X program. The program is built around the approach. If we can learn to set up and build power in before front foot strike so we get the hips open, we'll have a better chance of separating them from the shoulders and we'll put ourselves in a high velocity category. Because what hip to shoulder separation is, is it's torque. It's torsion in the body that creates a force multiplier. So now when a sow's shoulders rotate, they accelerate the speeds of the hips, which then pulls the arm back as the arm stays relaxed into optimal external rotation, which now puts torsion in the shoulder. And then that accelerates up the body into an early internal rotation as long as he stays stable in the front leg. So you can see how at front foot strike, you have to have done everything correctly if you're going to put yourself in a high velocity category because from there on out it happens so quickly and it's all pretty much a reaction to that front foot hip to shoulder separation so you can see your hips and shoulders come around together you get poor external rotation okay late internal rotation and you just continue to stay in the low velocity category so what we train at 3x pitching and what makes it a revolutionary revolutionary approach is we train how to use the lower half to build power and create optimal hip rotation hip shoulder separation front foot strike and that's 
through moving early, getting aligned early, specifically for the front foot front side opens, and then we power hip rotation into front foot strike to create optimal hip shoulder separation. That, in a nutshell, is Drake's pitching, and that's what the programs do to work to train. Now, there's two ways we have to train that. We have to train that through a throwing program, meaning we have to show you how to move this way. We have to put you through a series of drills that forces you to move like through these power pitching mechanics. Also, at the same time, as you are struggling with moving this way, your issues are power issues, meaning you don't have the power in your body to move this way. So as you just frustrate yourself through the drills, you're also working to build the power production in your body so you can then effectively and efficiently move through those components and ultimately have the result of high velocity at the end. Um, so you're a perfect candidate for it, Lewis, because you're young. You have time to develop and you have time to learn a complex but effective approach like 3x pitching. So uh, I would ultimately recommend that you do that. Um, if I, I do camps here, uh, 3x velocity camps, if you would like to come down and work with me personally. But you have everything at your fingertips to learn this approach. And if you really love pitching and you're serious about it, ultimately one day um, you could be in this high velocity category. So I want to help you do that. If you have any questions, please let me know and appreciate you sending your video.